Well, good day. Welcome to Cracking the Cryptic and a very happy Australia Day to anybody celebrating. It is the... Australia Day is the 26th of January. Um, obviously, um, our videos come out at mid-morning time the following day in Australia. Happy Australia Day. Look at this. I, I managed to load this up and I've literally only just noticed that there is a stylized kangaroo jumping across this grid. That is fantastic. I apologize to Wombat Breath for not noticing that immediately. It's obvious to everybody else who uses their eyes. It wasn't to me, but uh, this is an irregular Sudoku. We'll have a look at the rules in a minute. Um, Wombat Breath was incredibly kind, has apparently suffered with health issues in the last year, but is back to constructing Sudoku, which is great because uh, they're very good, basically. And, um, they said, thank you so much for our astonishing output of two videos a day, every day, over the last year and so on, and, um, and for our incredibly good value Patreon. I can only agree with that sentiment. Do check out our Patreon. Um, there are Sudoku hunts for a prize every month. There is loads of content, Simon solving longer videos, me solving difficult crosswords every time. There's also, all sorts of sort of oddities that go up there. It's very well worth two or three dollars a month. Solution videos to those Sudoku hunts if you pay the three dollars. Um, it's really not a lot and we recommend it highly, obviously. We also recommend our apps, which are fantastic. We don't have any irregular apps, but we do have line Sudoku and we will see some interesting lines in this puzzle. Um, what else is going on? We've got... Uh, of course, there's our merchandise, Sven Sudoku pad. They're all on the links under the video. But the first link is to this puzzle called Australia Day 2024 by Wombat Breath. And the rules are as follows. Well, irregular Sudoku rules apply. So one to nine appears in every row, every column, and every marked region, whether it be a three by three box or a different shape. Um, also, we have the diagonals. So each of the diagonals that are marked in the grid is a set of the digits one to nine with no repeats. Um, now, each orange line in the grid, there are three of them, they serve three purposes, three purposes. It is a palindrome, so digits, it reads the same forwards and backwards, that's what that means, so those two digits will be the same. It is also a thermometer with the bulb in the center. So for this line, the bulb will be there increasing as we get to the outside. And it's also a pair of arrows that meet in the center with the circles as ends. So you have to imagine an arrow with a circle here and ending there. What that means is that those two digits will add up to that one. Those two digits will add up to that one, which is no surprise given the palindrome nature of the, of the line. But that is fascinating. The shared arrow digit is obviously in the thermometer bulb and digits on thermometers must strictly increase from the bulb. A white dot, we have a couple of white dots. A white dot between cells indicates consecutive digits in those two cells. And that's it. This is all we need to solve this puzzle. These three lines, basically, and, and the other constraints and the shapes. But give it a try. I'm fascinated by this idea. Let's get cracking. I like lines which have multiple purposes. They're very clever, I think. So, we've got to start with the lines. There's nothing else to go on. So, okay, this... This is a bulb with a three length line in those cells. Oh no, sorry, this is a circle, an arrow circle. This is the bulb with the three length line in these cells. So the bulb has to be six, sorry, the circle has to be six, seven, eight or nine. The actual bulb of the thermos that also represent these is one or two. And the next digit is two or three. Now, I know this because these three digits have to be different. They're in the same region. And when you have three digits that have to be different, adding up to a Sudoku digit, six, seven, eight, or nine, they must include two of the very small digits, one, two, or three, because there's no way to do it without doing that. Then the next digit after that could be kind of anything 
from three to six. And those two will be the same. Now this is the same length line with the same properties on it. We obviously know that these three are different, sorry, yes. These three are different because they're in the same region. I was about to say these three are different, that doesn't matter so much. Um, it matters that the first three from the bulb are different. Then this again is three, four, five or six and the circle figure is six, seven, eight or nine. Ah, now, all of the circles are on the same diagonal here. So they're all different totals. This, this shorter line is not quite so helpful. I suppose the first digit can't be more than four, but the next one could be almost anything. And then the last one, well, on this bowl, on this white dot, well, I mean, I suppose, obviously, it's at least five on that. Oh, yeah, that's not actually bad. We're getting three different digits on this diagonal. So, what have we learned from this little excursion into these lines to start with? I'm tempted to say, not a lot. Those two digits are the same. Now, is there anywhere I can use... Yeah, look, these are the same, and they are ruled out of all of these cells. Right, that is very interesting. Because that digit, which is the same, let's give it a colour, we'll make that yellow, can't be in any of these cells in this shape. Clearly can't be on that white dot either. So yellow is in one of those two cells in, col well, in this shape. I don't want to go further than talking about the shape at the moment. Um, it's probably there, but we don't know that for sure. Oh, what do we do? What do we do here? It's difficult to get a handle on anything else. I mean, those are the same digit, but so what in this shape? It's ruled out of there. Ah, these three digits in row three can't be there, so they appear here. Now that's quite interesting, because it means that yellow is in one of those two cells. It can't be there because of that yellow. Now, yellow has missed the diagonal here. And it's missed it in this shape. Uh, so it's somewhere in one of those three cells on the diagonal. Mm. The diagonals might be very significant in this puzzle. I do think that, but I don't know. I don't know how to get a handle on it yet. Let's, let's just keep pondering what's going on. How do we get anything? The, I mean, these shapes are so empty in these regions. This shape's got nothing in. It's a bit weird. Even this shape's only got one diagonal cell. That is three, four, five, or six in the center. That's a one or a two. So, uh, in this region, oh, wow, okay, if they're the same, that's quite interesting. These two digits are the centres, the bulbs of their lines. If they were the same, that's interesting. The digit couldn't appear, appear in those cells and would have to be here. And then it can't be one. So at least one of these two is a two. And that is very useful. Look at that, that's beautiful. Right, I'm just gonna color those two cells. If they were the same, and we don't know that they are, if they were the same, that would be here in, in this central box. And that can't be the one, because that's the smallest digit in the bulb there. So they can't both be one. So one of these greens at least is a two. And they both see this cell on a thermo, 
in one case and in a column on the other. So that's a three. And they both see this cell, one of them on in the same shape, if you like, and one of them in the same column. And one of them's a two, so that's a three. So these greens, which don't have to be the same, I'm taking out the color in case that confuses me, have given us threes on the thermo lines, which I can fill in on the other ones. And now three is my yellow cell. And can we propagate yellow around the grid? Not at all in the central row, it's in one of those. We know it's in one of these two positions. And we don't really get much else about three out of that, which is strange, but these digits can't be three, they are higher, including the one in the center of the puzzle. This can't be three. Mm, okay, so much for that. Now I'm gonna think about these again, because if they're both the same, they are both twos. And then we're gonna get a two here as well. And then the two lines, the two longer lines begin two, three, and they have to end in different other small digits to give different lines on the diagonal, different numbers on the diagonal. I don't know. Oh, this can't be a three anymore, this cell. So let's put two, four, five, six. I suppose I have to go up to eight. That's really annoying. <laughs> It's not that exciting, is it? These are from those three digits. I mean, I wonder if there's a way of saying that these have to be different now. If they were the same, they're twos. I don't know, I think I've experienced no, 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 they can't both be twos, right. If they were both twos, then the, the thermos go two, three, four, nine, and these are both nines. They would have to both go two, three, four, nine. Right, so one of these is a one, and the other one is a two. Yeah, that's interesting. So one of these thermos does go two, three, four, nine. So one of these two digits is a nine. And one of these two is a four. Right, one of those two is a four by the same principle and they both see that digit, that's not a four anymore. One of these two is a nine, so that's not a nine on the same diagonal. That reduces the total in the next cell. So we've got that six digit cell down to four digits. It's, it's a minor game, we've got three in this shape already, so that's not a three. Now, this is a one-two pair. What else do they see? They both see this cell, that's not very interesting. They both see these two cells. I don't know. Whatever, I want to say that whatever that is. Ah, this can't be a two here, because that would have to be a one and they would then add up to three on the end of the line, which is not possible, partly because of this white dot, but for various reasons. So those aren't twos now. Right, so per right, let's call this one purple and this one green, and they are different. That, that's the way to deal with these. One of them is a one and one of them is a two. The purple in this shape is in one of those. The green in this shape is in one of those. Oh, I was going to say, well, this is very exciting. No, purple now is in one of those two cells in, in this shape down here. What about green? Have we learned anything about green? Well, green's in one of those two in that shape. I am going to mark that, although it's not as helpful, I think, as the purples, which are next to each other. Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it's just me. Um... Mm. So one of these goes two, three, four, nine. The other one then doesn't go one, three, five or one, three, six, of course. It can't, okay, whichever one of these is purple, sorry, whichever one of these is a one, its line can't go one, three, six because it has to end in a Sudoku digit adding those up. 
Its line now can't go 1, 3, 5, because the other one goes 2, 3, 4, and we can't have both of them ending in a 9. So they all they both end in a 4 on the, well, the second last digit of the thermo, the last digit that we're adding up to get to the arrow. So we've got a bunch of 4s in the grid now. And then we can put a I don't know. I was going to say we can put a four here in column four, but actually there could be a four there. There is a four in these three cells. So in this row, that four is in one of those two. We know exactly where it is because it can't be on the thermo. It's there. That, um, I'm trying to get rid of the color. Sorry, we're making that orange and four. This is now where three goes. Um, okay. Good. This is some sort of progress. We've got four in one of those cells. Yeah, I like these columns one, two, three, because the shapes are boxes and I understand those. Because of that on the diagonal, we can place four here. Um, how are we doing for fours? We've got six of them in the grid. Now I can do the four in column four, and it is at the top. So I'm glad I didn't go with my first instinct. We've got two fours left in this two by two area here. And that means that this isn't a four on the bulb here. And it's not purple, but it is one or two. So it is green and that's not green. Cool. Well, green's running out of places on the positive diagonal, but there's still three left. Hmm. <laughs> Come on. Three. We've got five threes in the grid. We need another one in column one. It's got to be there, I think. Can't go on the diagonal again. We still need a three on the negative diagonal. And it's suddenly become three in the corner. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spot, light, losing its religion. One of those is a three and one of those is a three. It's a little X-wing left at the end on threes. Okay, so we've got X-wings left on threes and fours on the right side of the grid. Okay, 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 okay. Stop saying okay. Purple and green are different. How is the rest of this grid going to populate at all with digits? We have to disambiguate them from each other somehow. Wow. Um, I'm thinking I might be hitting an impasse at the moment. But I hope not. So. Ah, we now know that one of these lines is 1, 3, 4 and the other one is 2, 3, 4. So the ends of those lines are an 8, 9 pair. That feels quite big. So I can do that on the other ends of the palindromes. They're an eight, nine pair and they're different from each other. I think I'm getting my coloring pencils out again. Bright blue and red, I suppose we have to go now. Bright blue over there, red here. We need bright blue on this diagonal. And it's either there or there. We've got red on both diagonals right now. This can't be eight or nine on this diagonal. So that is five, six or seven. This can't be seven anymore. Oh, it's also on this. Oh, well, it's become five, six or seven here. But on the white dot, that clears up all the confusion. Oh, that's gorgeous. Eight, seven, seven there, nine in blue, eight in red. Red's too bright, uh, too too dark actually, not too bright. Let's make it, I mean, I've got other colors. I'll go with the, the darker green color. Right, and now we can do these sums. Three plus four to equal eight. We need another one in that color, which is there. Purple is two. This digit is a six on this line. And all of our kangaroo lines are complete extraordinary. So the rest is a regular Sudoku and diagonals, I suppose. Let's think about the diagonals. We need a one on this diagonal in one of those positions. We need a six somewhere in the same box on the diagonal. The other diagonal is much less populated. 
Yeah, maybe that's not the way to go. Nine, four, three, eight, six, seven in row four. I mean, this is when you just have to suddenly spot digits and, and get, I don't want to say lucky, but a bit lucky. One or five, one, two or five, two or five in that row. Now this row, that is a naked five, and then there's an eight, seven pair in the row. But it's not a pair because we've got eight on that diagonal already. So they're done. We've done a row. Seven. So I'm looking at the digits on this diagonal. Three, eight, four, and seven already placed. That has to be, can't be one, nine, or six. So two or five. This one, one, two, six, or nine. I don't think it's worth carrying on that kind of marking up there. Ah, two is put, yeah, we know one of these two is a two. I've done that in the marking earlier, haven't I? Ah, these three digits go in these places. Can four be on the white dot? Only if it was with five. Yeah, I don't know how to use that discovery. Um, about these these three cells being those three. Nine in this region is in one of those two cells. Wow, we must be able to do more. I mean, we've, we've cracked the back of this puzzle already. Um, I'm feeling a bit dense now. Maybe I should know that that can't be a four or five pair. We'd need a five in one of those cells. I don't see how we know. Seven is in one of those two. Just seen that. Three still, oh yeah, three's an X-wing, isn't it? We don't know quite what goes on there. Seven in row one is in one of those two, which is a surprising juxtaposition. One, maybe. Okay, what about these cells then? They, the, they can't have three, seven, or six in. I'd love to do the sort of thing about what even digit or what odd digit goes in them, but I just don't think it's quite as available as normal. Yeah, some digit must be doing more work than I can see it doing at the moment. It's probably one of those that we've already focused on to an extent. Three, four, seven, eight, six, two is in one of those two cells. This is one, five, or nine. Eight in this column is either there or there. Six, no, I can't see a rationale for putting six somewhere. This region, we know that three is confined. Oh my goodness, I don't find this easy at all. These are from one, two, five, six. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So eight in this box is in one of those two cells. Um, two, five, six, three, four, eight, nine, and seven. Seven. No, nine's in one of those three. Seven's in one of those three. Not getting it. Not getting it at all. Okay, that pair. That's the pair that I feel I'm, I must be able to learn something out of. That is one, two, five, or nine. It can't be two because the digit on the other side of the dot can't be one or three. If that's a five, this is a four. If it's a one, this is a two. And if it's a nine, this is an eight. So this is always the even digit on the dot. And one of these has to be a four. So if that was a... Well, that's interesting. If this was four, two, one, that would be a one-two pair. 
and whichever one of those wasn't... Ah! Okay, imagine that this pair of digits, I'm going to make them grey, don't include four. Then in row nine, they are there. But the fascinating question then... Oh, no, it's only a fascinating question that rules out one and two. Because the question would be, where does this go on this diagonal? It couldn't go in those cells or there, this digit. And it also isn't allowed there because of the greys there. So all that's telling me is that this is not a 2-1 pair. Because if it's 9 or 8 that we have to find a home for... No, in fact! Ah, for a different reason. It can't be 4 and 8, 9 there. Because it's because of this cell, not this one. This one would have to be 8 or 9, and it can't be either. So this is the 4-5 pair in grey. That's really, really, really strange, but quite amusing um, as, a, as a rationale for getting through that bit of the puzzle. Right, we've got the last four done, and now we know this is four... Well, we know that one of these is a five, and I actually still don't know which, because I don't... Well, yes, I do. Five is not there, because it's here. So on the diagonal, it's in one of these three, but it's also in one of these two, so it has to be on the overlap in the corner. That's very nice. Now, I think this has to be a 1-6 pair, according to my markings earlier. Are they right? Why can't that be a 1? 6 is right. It has to be in one of those. For some reason, I've determined that this couldn't be a 1 earlier. I don't know if I'm trustworthy on that. No, I don't like that conclusion. I'm not risking it. This is 1 or 2. This is 2 or 6. And this is 1, 2 or 6 to complete the diagonal. I don't know. Maybe there was a good reason for that marking earlier, but I'm not risking it now. Not when we're kind of close to getting this done. Five, four, eight, three. Oh, we need a one in one of those cells in the row now. One of these must be two or six. That's not very exciting. That digit is going to be the same as that, so it can't be eight. Um, it's worth colouring again. Let's let's call that grey now. And this digit is where this cell is where eight goes now. Eight's got a colour. I don't think it really matters to do all of them, but might as well keep going while I while it might provide some information. Ah, oh, so now we've done eight on this diagonal. Three, eight, four, seven. No, that's not exciting. Three, five, four, seven, six up the final column. Eight, four, seven, one in column eight. We've still got three and five to place. Three is definitely in one of those two cells. Five expands that group into this cell, so. Ah, this one, two, five triple needs one in one of those positions. And we've, oh, well, that can't be one. It's a two, five pair in the row. This is one. That gets our colour. This is not coloured and is not one. There we go. Two, five and nine still to place in the central region. And that one, has that done anything? Not really. Three, one. That can't be five. One of these two is five in row seven. Mm, don't know. Don't know which. Two. And it's strange how this this is difficult at this point. Because you'd think once you get the lines in the in the grid, you've done most of the work. Um, but things are sometimes a bit upside down in Australia. Not literally, only figuratively. 
Right, these two cells are, the, sorry, these two cells are these two cells. Uh, so one of them is gray and one of them is two or six. Is that digit? Maybe I should think more about this and maybe there was a good reason I didn't believe it could be one earlier. Well, one of these three has to be one in this row. So that is six, seven or nine. What happens if that is one? Then one of those two is one. We've already got one of those two, or no, then we would have one of those two as one. There'd be a one in one of those. Oh, that's not a one now because of the diagonal. Seven, one, four, eight, three. So that is two or six. This one, two, five, six or nine. Um, one is in one of those two positions. Yeah, that's close to interesting box one, but it doesn't quite get the job done. Oh, goodness. Um, sorry I'm being a bit dense here. All the fours are finished. Two threes to go. They seem to have been the most helpful digits. This isn't a six because six on the diagonal is in one of those cells. And it can't be one or seven because of where it is in the other cell. So that is two or nine in gray. Now, if it was two, that would be two on the diagonal. That would be two in row. Oh, it, I said it couldn't be. Oh, one of these two is a two. Oh, that's huge. That was true for this because of the purple colouring for this shape. That's going to fix both of these cells. So grey has become a nine. That one is a six. Ah, oh, goodness. Pencil mark it. Why didn't I pencil mark it rather than just leave the colouring in? Ah, well, no one can answer that question except me and I don't know the answer. Nine and six must be in those two cells. This is now a one, two, seven, triple. One and two are in two cells there. This is a seven. Let's get rid of the corner mark there. Look, I've got another one, two pair that I could mark in green and purple, but I'd really rather just attach them to the others. Now, two, five, and seven. That is two or five, so this is seven. In fact, that is not two or five, that is two. This is five on the diagonal. Now we are going to get this done, I think. I don't think we can need much more information. That is not a two. Never has been able to, oh no, it has been able to be a two, it's just not now. That can't be five or nine. So that's a two six pair on the diagonal. This is a nine. Nine was meant to be in a color. Um, oh, it's nine is both gray and sort of purpley, so. Sorry, both grey and bright blue. So there we go, we'll make it bright blue. One of those is a nine. One of these two is a nine. In the final column, that is the only possible nine. So we can fill two of those nines in, make them bright blue, get rid of that pencil marking. And then we've got nine done in the central box now. And that seems to be well, this will be the last of the nines. There we go, nines all done. This is a six. This is not nine here, obviously. We've got a two five pair there. So we need six and seven at the top and bottom of the grid. These are from one, two, eight. Um, that's not done, apparently. Oh, I just feel like we've we've absolutely got into this now. Five is in one of those cells, and the others, well, eight's in one of those two, and one is somewhere in the three. Um, the diagonal there is done. Ah, this diagonal is now useful, because one, two, as a pair, are both looking at that cell, which now has to be five. 
that's good. Okay, so we need a five, well, that, yeah, eight and five can be filled in in column four. That is a two now, which gets us a six in row two and finishes that diagonal, which finishes the other diagonal. And now we've got everything we need, all the wherewithal to complete the puzzle. So let us do that. This is a 2-8 pair. Um, in the columns, this 6-7 pair are not resolved. In the next column, though, we have 6 and 1, and that fixes the 6-7 pair. This is 8 and 3. This is 2 and 7. They're all done. That fixes row 4, which has been outstanding for a little while. This is now 6 next to 3. 6 next to 3, this must be 1. Then we can go column by column, 2, 5, 1, 7, 6, 8, and 2, 8. There we go. Lovely, lovely puzzle. Um, Australia Day 2024 by One Bat Breath. Great fun. Very clever setup. Let's just correct the colouring on that cell. Oh, it's going to change... So, well, never mind. There we go. That, that is the final grid and very good fun. So happy Australia Day to everybody celebrating and have a great year. Bye for now.